This is Cybert signing into Kane's Wrath on the map Forgotten Forest for game number one of a best of nine, 2v2. On the left side, playing as the pink screen, this is Rex. We'll talk more about him in just a moment. His teammate as the yellow GDI, this is Phoenix. And on the right side of the map, making up our second team, the Kane's Wrath power couple is back at it again as the green. This is Drive. And as the cyan marked of Kane, this is Futurama. That's right, Drive and Futurama are back at it. Drive playing vanilla, plain old GDI, which I guess uh, those of you probably already spotted it because of the normal harvesters. But the matchup for game number one is Scrin GDI versus Marked of Kane GDI. So even though it is Forgotten Forest, even though it is R19, ooh, Drive actually gets the far bunker, so very nice catch for him, kills Phoenix's rifleman. Even though this is R19G, I believe, uh, yeah, we still get a very strong GDI presence one Scrin and one Marked of Cain. So the faction choices in game number one are looking pretty normal. Nothing is unusual thus far. Super happy to see Drive and Futurama back at it again as a couple, uh, you know, playing a 2v2. Super glad to have a best of nine 2v2 as well. Means we get to take, hopefully, a look at a couple of extra games. Most of the time, 2v2s tend to be best of fives or best of sevens just because uh, 2v2 games tend to be a bit longer than 1v1 games. But super cool to see uh, hey, a crane. Uh, super cool to see a bit of a different series coming up here. By the way, big thanks to Shanks for sponsoring this show match. Not sure if he has a different in-game name, uh, but his Discord ID is Shanks. So uh, big thanks to him for bringing these four players together for this 2v2. Now, Rex, I am not familiar with this player. I did hear that apparently he is one of the best Chinese players, and he recently moved to Canada. And so uh, I guess that's why he's playing with Phoenix Drive and Futurama now, but I'm super excited. I know there have been uh, videos and games of him popping up recently. So apparently he is a player of note and someone to perhaps be feared. But I'm looking forward to seeing that firsthand myself. Very calm opening thus far here in game number one. Nothing too crazy going on. Pretty quick macro-oriented or openers. That was almost a misfire on the EMP. Almost a bit of friendly fire there. Uh, very, very calm macro-oriented, you know, relatively quick two-base kind of stuff from each team. Which, you know, for a best of nine for a 2v2... Why not start out a little bit more calm? Just do almost like a warm-up game to size up the other team and feel out, is it a good idea to go for something a little bit more rash and risky? Free Harvester kill. That's an empty Harvester, so no loss on the Blue Tiberium. The other Blue Tiberium Harvester, I think, was able to escape, and it's into Tier 3 off of two refineries. Well, three refineries. Uh, no second War Factory just yet. For Rex, He does have a portal up top, and he's going to need to deal with these pit bulls sooner rather than later. One harvester down in the main field. A second harvester gets dropped. Attenuated force fields finishes up as Phoenix's pit bulls help to drive away the pit bulls of drive. A couple of exit shots, but I think uh, that guy might go down. Yeah. Last hits there, and unfortunately, ooh, EMP catches that harvester. Just going to allow... Futurama do a bit more damage. He's got those EMPs ready to fire off. And of course, as we head into the late game, we're going to have to keep an eye on that Tiberium Catalyst missile, see if he nukes any refineries for a quick one-click victory. MCV's moving towards the contested middle field, at least the southern contested middle field. I guess there is, in this variant, two contested middle fields, and... We'll keep an eye on who's able to gobble up the top one. Relatively passive opener, but Futurama might want to put on a bit of pressure here. 
Just infantry getting tagged by that Tiberium in the south. Three Predator tanks getting caught by the EMP. Three more get caught. Solid EMPs coming in here from Futurama. Rex going to be bringing perhaps a couple of reinforcements, but for now it's just a buzzer hive up north. A couple of rocket squads helping to eat up these Predator tanks, and this feels like a decent trade for Futurama. He's not going to win any big victories here, but he's at least thinning out the Predator tank herd, and if his rocket squads can finish off these last couple of tanks, it may actually be worth it in terms of cost. Well, there's going to be the one click anyways. He gets a refinery, slows down Futurama, is able to get a kill there, slows down Phoenix. And oh, uh, look at this drive coming back in. Harvester getting, what was that? I think a Harvester just got blinked away. He just disappeared from the Northern field and perhaps he's somewhere in the South. Yeah, taking a bit of damage and uh, well, wherever he is, he is gone. I'm not sure actually what just happened there, but that Harvester was there and then suddenly gone. Tier 3 comes in for Phoenix. Pitbull's going to be escaping to the south. And for now, Drive and Futurama, they're going to have to contend with this center field being taken by Rex and Phoenix. And the last couple of Pitbulls will go down. So two, maybe three Harvester kills for these Pitbulls on their second swing through, but trading out all of the pit bulls, none of them it looks like will be able to escape. Phoenix going to be moving in here. A lot of GDI firepower, two GDI harvesters, two marked of cane harvesters, but the marked of cane harvesters may not be able to escape. Eh, maybe a low health guy will be able to get on out of here. Trades back and forth, both teams taking a bit of damage here or there. Phoenix's army a little bit weaker than it would otherwise have been. Eradicator Hexpod on the way in the north. Beacons as these hammerheads have been spotted. Mastermind gets sniped. Rex loses the Mastermind there, but the hammerheads go down. Plasma Missile Battery comes up with that Shard Launcher upgrade. It quickly deals with those hammerheads, and that's going to be a Sonic emitter right onto the front line. One good shot against Drive's tanks, but it won't find another shot as Drive pulls back from the front line. Tripods marching their way forward, and they are going to scare away this force and cause a full retreat from Drive's forces. Phoenix, no secondary group of units to try and cause a collapse. Although it looks like Drive might be reverse moving directly into Futurama, into uh, Phoenix and Rex's natural expansion. He's going to be reverse moving into a bunch of disintegrators as he needs to uh, get out of this pocket that he has found himself in. Tripods on one side, defense is on the other side. Sonic Emitter is about to get an amazing shot. Two Predator tanks going down. And we did hear, I think, a Marv or a Redeemer entering the battlefield a moment ago. Juggernaut is here as well, and this army is going to get cleaned up. Drive getting caught and killed. No escape for him. Scouting from Futurama. Surely that's not another Catalyst missile already. Phase locking down. All right, I'm not actually sure what that was. EMP catches these units. It may have also been a phase just to keep them safe, or a stasis, rather, to keep them safe. Rage Gen fires off. Juggernauts are going to be paying the price here, but the Sonic Emitters are still on the front line. The cluster around the War Factory means the EMPs are money as the Obelisk gets dropped down, and the Avatars finally, the, uh, the Tripods finally making their way to the front line. Magnetic Mines in front of that Marv Reclamator hub, and it's going to be up to this Redeemer to hold the line until more more defenses or more reinforcements arrive. Three tripods going to be storming in here. Only two do remain as two avatars on the north side are here, but they get EMP'd by those tripods. More EMPs coming in, but it's not a juicy shot as the front line collapses for Drive and Futurama. Phoenix and Rex hold off the duo from the east. There's the blink forward on top of the Juggernauts. Gets two of them going for a third, but he may not be fast enough as Shockwave Artillery locks down the retreating forces. The tripod gets in perfect position to EMP that Redeemer, and this Eradicator Hexabond is going to have to be whisked away 
to be saved from anything. Rage Gen at the perfect moment. Stealth Field as the follow-up. Orbital Bombardment on top of the Redeemer. They're going for the kill on this epic unit as the Juggernauts of Phoenix will not be stopped. He's got the numbers. The EMPs were not enough to slow him down. Orbital Bombardment is a hit and a miss as the Redeemer survives. Not enough hits to clear out that Redeemer. Marv is online for Phoenix. Meanwhile, Drive has taken the field in the north power offline for a moment, and the Sonic Emitter is not going to be online for long as that tripod locks it down and gets out of range. A difficult moment for Drive and Futurama. They did not take the middle field, and now the top field is being harassed. Corral the Harvesters around the Sonic Emitter. It's your only chance to delay the game a bit longer. Hammerheads showing up this time from Phoenix as they go for the snipe on the Enlightened. The Venoms are going to clear out the Hammerhead, but it'll stop the Enlightened from coming back to fight another day. And juggernauts are here, but another blink forward from this Eradicator Hexapod. It's been healed up nearly to full, and this Eradicator Hexapod is out for blood. It's undefended, but I think it can be whisked away at the moment's notice. One, two, three Juggernauts going down. Harvesters under threat. And, well, this Eradicator Hexapod, if it hasn't been whisked away now, it won't matter because the GG comes in. Drive and Futurama have been defeated. A solid Game 1 victory goes to Rex and Phoenix. Game number one, a slow start, but once the action started, started it did not stop. A good performance by Drive and Futurama, but not nearly good enough for the W. Rex and Phoenix, can they keep up the pressure in game number two? Game two takes us to the map Tiberium Pantanize, which apparently means wetlands. Uh, I don't think these look really <laughs> like wetlands, but uh, that may be the uh the wrong origin of the word in the south however we have as the pink gdi this is phoenix yeah phoenix is playing pink and as the orange traveler 59 this is rex he's got the stasis he's got the descent let's see if it's trouble for the guys in the north as the cyan traveler 59 this is Futurama. And as the green marked of Kane, this is Drive. Drive and Futurama changing up their factions a little bit, abandoning GDI entirely. Now, it's been a while since I have seen in a pro level game a Descent Rush do any significant damage at all. It doesn't matter if it's Bike Rush or Master Leaf or Phoenix. Whoever is operating the Descent Rush, it just doesn't do much damage at all. However, this seems pretty undefended, pretty unscouted, pretty unprepared for. So we'll see exactly... Ooh, that buzzer may have spotted the assimilator and if he sees the fast legs he is going to know that this is a possibility the buzzer hive is already out the gunwalker is already out so as long as there is not a big big mistake in the unit control this should be absolutely fine although trading out the tip spike is not going to be fun uh, okay won't have to trade out the tip spike and it's a bit of a wash a little bit slower harvesters a little bit slower refinery but you're kind of delaying your opponent by forcing out a couple of buzzer hives, forcing out a couple of low power modes. Maybe it evens out in the end, or maybe Rex is just a little bit behind. Grabbing the extra tip spike is definitely nice, having two tip spikes to one. But is it enough? Eh, maybe not. EMP catches the MCV, not a game winner, but a nice win for a chicken dinner. Having three awakened squads is just a lovely bit of delay. Again, not a game winner, but just a way to tilt your opponent a little bit, just to cause your opponent some annoyance a little bit. Maybe get a non-power plant. Anything, any damage is damage. Let's see if they're able to grab a Harvester. One Harvester on the dock, and they're not going to target it down fast enough. So the second Harvester comes in for the kill, and Futurama drops the Buzzer Hive. That's the end. Good night 
to Rex's descents. The buzzers tear them apart. The defenses tear them apart. And uh, a bit unfortunate there for Rex that he lost them that way. And uh, oh, the EMP just, he tried to lead the APC, but the APC stopped moving. And so he actually dodged it. That was pretty funny. APC goes down. Uh, the MCV was already in a pretty good spot for that first refinery on the natural expansion. But the, uh, the you know, EMPs maybe delayed the placement of that first refinery by a bit. Everyone is moving for their natural expansions. Other than the early game descents, not a big disruption to the beginning of the match. I mean, it's uh, pretty straightforward from that point forward. Phoenix with a couple of APCs. He's already lost one APC, so he's maybe a little bit weaker than this otherwise would be. No AP ammo just yet. A couple of bikes, couple of, or actually a couple of buggies, couple of scorpions. No bikes here for drive. Meanwhile, Futurama is going to try and steal some of this blue Tiberium. Rex is going to take a bit of damage on his harvester. Not a killing amount of damage, but Futurama has a couple of descents mixed into this army as well. Rex with a couple of gunwalkers might get sandwiched here as Futurama and drive join forces. Scorpions, seekers, gunwalkers, even a buggy and a couple of descents getting in on the action as uh, those other descents get cleaned up. Futurama able to steal away that blue Tiberium, able to stop everyone else from grabbing that blue Tiberium, but he does lose an engineer in the north. Descents walking their way into doom and destruction. That was either a miss rally or a miss click. Either way, those descents were not trading out for their lives. They were just dying in despair. Pitbull APC in the south getting caught. Drive looking to secure that blue Tiberium for himself. Futurama is uh, nowhere to be seen, but Phoenix, on the other hand, is going to try and escape with those APCs. Gunwalker Wars in the north. Rex has struck first with his first couple of mind control tactics, and the buzzers are at the wrong angle. The Gunwalkers giving chase, and they get the kill on the last mind controlling cultist. Well, one more does manage to get a capture there, and it's going to be a Gunwalker trade for these two Traveler 59 players. Futurama has fast legs as well, but he doesn't have any cultists, at least not on the front line. Meanwhile, on the right side of the map, Phoenix is getting a bit of a scout here as he continues to run away with this APC. He's been chased all the way from that bottom right-hand corner of the map, now into the base of Drive, where it looks like he gets cleaned up or... He's still running around for a couple of moments longer. Gunwalker Wars in the middle. The lightning spike from Futurama just on the aggressive side of that blue field to provide some extra protection to those harvesters. And a bit of action exploding everywhere as Phoenix is looking to close in on the beam cannons of Drive. And this could be a pretty early game kill here as the beam cannons getting gobbled up will be a delay on any future aggression that Drive was hoping to execute. A couple of tripods do march their way forward. One tripod at least and two obelisks here to defend this location. Samsite comes up. Beam Cannon manages to survive the engagement and the tripod will give its life in defense of that area. Cultists have not been shut down yet and I'm not sure where the cultists of Futurama actually went. It looks like just one of them is hanging out near the front line. This APC is still alive, poking and prodding at those buildings. Futurama and Drive are going to push Phoenix back for now, but it looks like the Hammerheads are going to be re-engaging. They're going for the kill on the Prodigy. They get it as that Prodigy was not defended, and the Hammerheads will eventually be cleaned up, but not before that crucial kill of the Prodigy. Sniping that first Prodigy, denying Futurama from any Prodigy shenanigans for the next minute or so as he rebuilds that Prodigy. And hopefully for uh, Phoenix, maybe even Futurama forgets to rebuild that Prodigy. Eradicator Hexapod out on the field for Rex and for Futurama as well. So they both got it. Well, Redeemer just stepped out onto the field. Looks like four drive here in the south. No Marv just yet. Uh, Marv on the way, moments away from joining. 
And there we go, right into the field. These guys are going to be fighting over this field. Beam cannons are nice. Would be better to have a couple more of them. Scorpion tanks are here as well. Dozer blades are mixed in. And this is going to be a SAM site getting added on. Redeemer is ready. Stealth is already here. Orca Strike comes in. Hammerheads as well. Phoenix looking for every bit of damage that he can find. Futurama in the north is about to run out of cash, so he's going to need a third field and soon. Rage Gen fires off. Beam Cannons hoping to bleed these Harvesters dry, but they're actually not doing very much damage at all. Marv is going to have to back on out. Scorpion Tanks are committing to the attack. They're going for the Harvesters. They might be able to take a couple of Harvesters down, but as long as the Marv is here, Phoenix's economy can stay online. Redeemer is marching its way forward. Gets a juggernaut for free there. Beam cannons starting to work away at these harvesters. There's going to be the manual stealth field on that Redeemer. So now it's not just the disruption tower providing the stealth. It's going to be that stealth field as well. Rex taking a ton of damage on his Eradicator Hexapod. The slow field as Futurama tries to catch and kill this Eradicator. It's gone. Bye-bye. As the first epic unit in game number two falls making Rex and Phoenix a little bit weaker. Phoenix trying to push forward in the south. Shockwave artillery fires off. It looks like it's going to miss the Redeemer entirely. A couple of those blasts coming close and a free juggernaut again for Drive as he blasts off that Rage Gen and he gets a couple of shots on that juggernaut. The rest of his front line has fallen though. Sonic emitters getting placed down. Disruptors or Devastator warships are here as well to shell the base from afar. Phoenix and Rex coming together to attack this southern corner base. Futurama doing what he can to drop a couple of buzzer hives, but his army is up in the north. It's moving in on Rex's natural expansion, and Futurama might be able to swat down the entire north side of the map, creating a safe pocket expansion behind this army as Rex has been defeated. Hands everything over to Phoenix. It's going to be a 1v2. Can Phoenix do it? A 1v2 is tough. He's winning the fight in the south, but he's losing the fight in the north. And this Eradicator Hexpot is an expensive paperweight if he doesn't get it out of here. No EMPs have landed on that Eradicator Hexpod, but it's going to be the phase that saves it. It's going to be a couple of Sonic emitters to delay this, and there's going to be the crush as the, as the Eradicator Hexpod doesn't march forward. He starts marching forward for the crush, and immediately Futurama's army is like, let's get out of here. All right, this might be doable. A Traveler 59 GDI combination force could be extremely powerful. And now that it's one base, the income is here in the south. That's the important point. Although this field has regrown quite a bit, a growth accelerator could be placed on that main field as well. And actually, Phoenix might kind of be able to do this. He's got half of a big field here. He's got three regrowing Tiberium fields under his control. He's got an Eradicator Hexapod. I think he's still got the Marv cranking around somewhere on the map. Yeah, he's actually pressuring Drive right here. So the 1v2 is possible. It's going to be a tough fight no matter what. A 1v2 is always a tough fight, but it's not impossible. It is a winnable position. He can try and pull back to a juggernaut sonic emitter force. I love this from Drive. If he's able to sneak around the map, kill off some juggernauts, stop the reinforcements from joining the front line, and also disrupt Phoenix back at home, then that could slow down this army and allow Drive and Futurama to whittle it down. EMPs could play a crucial role. Let's see if tripods from either side can land any of those EMP moves because this Marv out front has two engineers inside of it, but a couple of EMPs could take away all of its health bars. Futurama looks poised to commit to the attack. Uh, Phoenix is still driving forward. He's taking a ton of damage here. Rage Gen does fire off as that Redeemer is maybe looking to... Nope. Seal the deal will not happen as that Redeemer finds a couple of Juggernauts wandering by themselves in the middle. I don't know where that Marv got whisked away to, but it's a full-on retreat from Phoenix. Uh, that's a blink forward. Okay, that's a landing of that. I don't know where that Shockwave Artillery fired off either. I don't know what anything is happening. A Marv just disappeared from the front lines. Here it is, next to that war factory. 
and a shockwave artillery doesn't seem to have had much impact on the game. Phoenix is retreating. He is reorienting his army and perhaps reforming his front line. It's always tough. Drive and Futurama should probably try and focus uh, a bit on harassment. You know, if they can both attack at one area, but stealth tanks or something sneak around the backside to snipe harvesters to cause chaos and cause problems. You know, forcing Phoenix to micro on two fronts could be a way to really seal the deal. EMP lands as the Raider buggies and these attack bikes get the kill almost, but the phase saves it once again. Those screen one clicks to save the day. The drone ship getting caught by the slow field as well. Sonic emitters are here. It's an all-out war as Phoenix is relocating a big portion of his army from the bottom right-hand corner of the map up here to the new front line. FaZe is going to wear off soon on this Eradicator Hexpod. Futurama stepping forward. His army has mostly retreated from the front line. The Eradicator Hexpod and the Redeemer still standing for the current moment. Drone ship manages to touch down. Drone ship manages to provide that build radius. Sonic emitters clearing the ground. And it's going to be the phase on top of the Eradicator, on top of the Redeemer. The one clicks go both ways as the cultists get sniped by the buzzers, get called in by Futurama. And there's going to be a cap of one of the tripods. A second tripod gets the area mind control as the juggernauts level the field. And it's a big push forward, mostly from Futurama as he's looking to clear this out. Tib Vane detonation comes in. Blink forward as the kill on the Marv is the goal. And the shock troopers get it as this Eradicator Hexpod now stands alone. Futurama committing everything that he's got on the ground to this attack. And that Eradicator Hexapod is being kept busy. But now it's about these juggernauts as they march forward. Looking for the kill, they get the Eradicator Hexapod, but not the Redeemer who's going for the crush, going for the kill. One Juggernaut goes down, a second Juggernaut eliminated, but the Eradicator Hexapod stays alive on the left side. Sonic emitters come back online, a double blast on a double vet Redeemer, but the EMPs are massive. Railgun Mammoths are here for Phoenix, but only two of them remain on the front line. The Redeemer comes forward, the screen air armada evaporates but the cultists are here to back up this force drive and futurama have done it phoenix has been broken and it looks like the end of the game is nigh well his last chance might be this eradicator hexapod there isn't much of an army other than the eradicator hexapod everything else has been blown to bits engineers inside of these juggernauts could change the tide Four or five juggernauts plus a couple of tripods. If they were in safe hands, they could be a force for Phoenix to try and win this game. But it's Mass Engineer coming out from Futurama. He's got those fast legs. Shockwave Artillery getting called in. Husks are getting captured. Shockwave Artillery catches the Redeemer, and it's going to be the Orca Strike, but it's not enough. It does take out one of the tripods, and the other ones do fall to the Sonic Emitter Blast. EMP locks down that Redeemer, but it's not actually enough firepower from the side of Phoenix to knock it down. Phoenix is going to have to come up with something a little bit better. EMP doesn't land. The crush comes in. The second EMP lands as this war factory goes down as well. That's rear armor from that Eradicator Hexapod. The chain comes in. Futurama and Drive will find the kill in game number two to even up the score. The comeback was there, but Phoenix has to call it quits. 1-1, and this will not be a shutout. Hopefully, it's not a 5-1 either, but it at least won't be a 5-0 here in this best of nine. Drive in Futurama, Rex and Phoenix all feel like they're playing fantastically, so let's jump into game number three. And game three takes us to Wastelands Dam, which we have seen a number of epic 2v2s on in the past in the south. Playing as the orange GDI, this is Phoenix. Not able to make the 2v, or the 1v2 happen in game number two. And the pink Traveler 59, this is Rex. On the top side, playing as 
the green marked of Kane. Give it up for Drive. His teammate, the ever present Cyan GDI. This is Futurama. Futurama switches it up to GDI, but Rex keeps his trusty Traveler 59. Phoenix has also been liking the GDI. He always, uh, maybe this isn't true historically, but he does uh, kind of make me, make me think of a GDI player. Uh, Futurama and Drive also play a fair bit of GDI, but partially that is because GDI is just such a solid tournament faction. Phoenix, he's going to be sticking with that. No mix-ups in terms of the faction. Definitely a mix-up in terms of the colors. These guys swapped colors on me back to the way that they were before. Well, actually, the reverse of game number one, or game number two, and similar to game number one. A couple of bikes do get spotted out. It's the hope of the EMP. Drive lost his MCV coming down this hill one time. And it looks like that is exactly what he had planned in this match. He has got four or five EMPs ready to go. A couple of these are full health awakened squads, which means he did build them from the barracks. That is a bit of a cost that you do not normally factor into the beginning of your build in a game. But it does mean that Drive will not be losing his MCV on the transfer down. It is a dangerous road that the player in the southern position of each... Actually, I guess this one, it's not really the southern position. Double EMP lands on the APCs. One APC will go down to the bikes. Pit bulls are going to be able to chase away the bikes, and it looks like the riflemen inside of those APCs will lock down those Awakened squads. So Awakened squads all going down. EMP lands. <laughs> not a really significant EMP, but it does sort of delay that pit bull by a couple of moments. Drive is at the bottom of the hill. And as I was starting to say earlier, one player in each of the pairs of uh, players has a very easy drive to your expansion. In this case, it's Rex and Futurama. Meanwhile, Drive and Phoenix have to walk down the ramp of danger to your low ground expansion. And then they're going to be potentially fighting over that corner field. All of this is actually uh, pretty similar to the layout of the last game. Rex and Futurama both ended up in the northern positions, which means we might be seeing a sort of 1v1 in the top left-hand corner, and then seeing a 1v1 just like last time between Drive and Phoenix in the bottom right-hand corner. APC gets cleaned up. Last shot from that bike manages to catch the kill. No buildings just yet from Phoenix. Meanwhile, a lightning spike gets deployed from Rex in the north. It will eventually get taken down, but the APC combo that just moved out from Futurama has, a, has really accomplished very little. It is a rig attempt by Phoenix, but the rig is currently on the high ground. It has not made it down to the low ground where it is most needed. So Phoenix is going to be taking a bit of damage on that War Factory. Never fun when you have to place a War Factory and immediately repair it back up from half health, basically. It's an operation center and a second War Factory for Drive as well. So it's a delay on the economy for both of the players who are on the low ground. They're both wanting to put a bit of pressure and are both a little bit scared of getting jumped on. Bikes are going to try and sneak around the backside of that base. Meanwhile, Futurama is prepping for the late game. Goes command post, and it looks like Drive is going to catch one Harvester. Nice and easy. Second Harvester, but it might cost him as this tripod makes its way over. Rex is going to defend his teammate. Second Harvester goes down. Two bikes get eliminated, or a bike and a buggy, rather. Third Harvester will not go down, but it is low on health. All right, it's costly, but it was worth it. Might even get a couple of Seekers out on the exit. Gonna trade the rest of the bikes for it? Maybe. Beacons firing off. Orcas have perhaps been spotted. Rex and Phoenix will want to know about the Orcas of Futurama. Three Orcas, fourth one is going to hit the deck pretty soon. And there's the tier three getting placed by Futurama. 
So Rex is no longer the only high-tech player. Prodigy is out on the map. We'll have to keep an eye on that Prodigy. There's the blink forward. Area mind control is a miss. Rex does not capture any Preds or APCs. Hammerheads might be a necessity for Futurama, although he might let Drive go for Venoms and be the anti-Prodigy guy. Rig is here, a couple of Predator tanks as well. EMP catches one Predator tank, second EMP could catch a big cluster. Drive doesn't see the opportunity. He's defending back at the main, at the natural expansion. There's the EMP, it catches one more Predator tank and that's going to be a safe location for a couple of Predator tanks to hang out next to Drive's base. The Hammerhead is here, it's just poking a prod in, but this is not the same as the amount of firepower that is on the other side of the map. Predator tanks have already taken down one refinery. They're gonna be able to clean up the second one. The rig has expired here as it gets cleaned up by the forces of Futurama, and finally that last refinery gets extinguished. Ooh, one Harvester on the transfer, second Harvester manages to escape. These Predator tanks may be all committed to the cause because they may be getting cleaned up on the exit. Mothership in the middle of the map. It's a, uh, it's a visual feature of the map, by the way. When you hear that big explosion popping off, that's the Mothership, the neutral Mothership in the middle of the map getting destroyed. It's on sort of a loop. That's a push in the middle. Drive has a couple of avatars on the front line. He's got supercharged particle beam as well. Prodigy gets the area mind control on at least one avatar. I think that's a dual beam avatar as well, as he does clean up some of the forces of future of Drive. And the pink color for Rex is going to take over the mind of those avatars. They still have the green beam cannon decal. Of, uh, of their original owner. So that's kind of interesting that most of the unit changes color, but not that beam cannon. It's a sonic emitter fight as cultists come to the front line, but so does Futurama, and he's going to be aiming for those cultists, trying to gun them down. He gets the prodigy, gets a couple of cultists, but he's going to be curating out every single one of those hammerheads as the Pred APC steps on forward. EMP catches the harvester, but none of the fighting forces of Phoenix get EMP'd. Tripod backs off from the front line absorbing a lot of damage from those supercharged particle beam shredder turrets as the shockwave artillery rains down on this army. Predator tanks explode and the cultists capture the minds of the fighting forces that remain. The entire advance has been halted in a matter of 10 seconds from the side of Drive and Futurama. Phoenix and Rex have nearly made safe their front line. EMPs are slowing down the Juggernaut, slowing down that war factory, but I don't know that it'll be enough to stop this force. Railguns on those Predator tanks, but that tripod gets taken away to safety. A fresh Prodigy is out on the map, and the Railgun Preds are actually gonna find some damage here. They get a kill on one Juggernaut. A second Juggernaut will not go down as, it gets, as one Predator tank gets mine capped and it's going to be a couple of magnetic mines here as well prodigy versus and cultists both here uh, oh he runs into the structure as the hammerhead shows up drive and futurama had a very impressive looking attack but it suddenly fell apart and now these cultists and these prodigies are causing some real problems for the duo from the north now in this particular case Futurama might once again be the savior of our team in the north. They might lose the fight in the south and win the fight in the north. That Marv is making its way up the hill. It's currently undefended, but there isn't too much on the ground from Rex. Well, three tripods. EMP is a dangerous weapon. That could be more than enough to take down a Marv if the EMPs are good. We'll see what Futurama is able to do to support that Marv. For now, nothing at all. That Marv might as well get to Marvistein in that field, making some cash for Futurama. Futurama calls in the Orca Strike, but these Harvesters are now basically back up to full health. Phoenix has managed to get full four, uh, four Juggernauts onto the front line. Miss on the Harvesters. Phoenix has managed to get four Juggernauts onto the front line. They do get EMP'd temporarily, but a minor setback, not a big kill. 
Hammerheads are here from Futurama on the north side. So if the Prodigy does show up, he will have a swift way to deal with it. Supercharged Particle Beams, they don't kill Annihilator Tripods fast, but they do leech down those health bars over time. One Tripod gets teleported away to safety. Rex has been on top of those teleports. Unbelievably frustrating to play against, but, you know, Rex is, uh, is utilizing those tools as best he can. Don't step into the area of the Scrin Anti-Air. They will absolutely waste you. Oh, there's gonna be the blink forward and that's a bit of a mistake perhaps. Well, he gets the MCV there, so maybe it is not a mistake as the AA battery gets deployed. Futurama and Drive may have to give up this pocket of the map. Drive knows it as he kills on exit one of the husks of Futurama. Phoenix once again taking the bottom right-hand corner of the map. He has defeated Drive. This combination force Rex and Phoenix. It seems like in game number two, it was a problem for Drive and Phoenix. Here in game number three, it might be unstoppable for Drive and Phoenix. Nope, for Drive and Futurama. Phoenix and Futurama are giving me shock trepid, shock treatment vibes. Obviously, they're spelled very different, but they both have similar, similar sounding uh, starts. Phoenix, Futurama on opposite sides of the map. Phoenix going to be able to take the bottom right-hand corner of the map. He gets the tip spike as well, or keeps hold of the tip spike, maybe. That's a better way to put it. Uh, Venom's going to be crashing and burning as they uh, look to protect this Marv. The entire map has reoriented into the top left-hand corner of the map. Phoenix just driving his way through Drive's old base. And this is three Tiberium fields that can be taken by the team in the south. Futurama says, let's go as he moves his MCV forward with his Marv. This is going to be an all-out assault. Drive has very little to do with this. MCV gets deployed or does it get crushed? It doesn't matter because that Eradicator explodes. Big time! That was just about an insta kill if there I ever see have I've ever seen one. Huge amount of infantry all getting caught up on each other as they get shelled by that shockwave artillery. And the last shots lock down the Marv as the return fire comes in. Three juggernauts get caught, but there's three more uncaught by the EMP. It's going to be orbital bombardment on both sides. Massive lines of juggernauts for both teams. The slow field as well as Futurama tries to close the distance on the front line his artillery getting caught way behind his infantry and look at that playing race cars as phoenix just gets massive crush and kills on the front line infantry double heroic rocket squads are here pumping out an insane amount of dps from the side of futurama drive all over the base with this harvester full of Tiberium just here to absorb shots and crush any infantry that might be present. I love Phoenix camping a couple of units out on that blue field just to get any loose kills on harvesters. Area mind control not slowing down the front line and I thought Drive and Futurama were basically done for but no Futurama almost by himself marching up this hill putting on the pressure keeping the front line alive, APCs all over the place, and the juggernauts following up behind to deal massive damage to anything that remains. Even a couple of rock heads going to be swinging through to clean up Phoenix's units. Tungsten Shell is powerful, but it's not powerful enough to stop this ground army as hammerheads get whittled away. That slows down the ability for Futurama to clean out this base, but they still have to crack the southern expansions of Rex and Phoenix. It's up to Futurama to make it happen. Drive is technically still in this game. I'm not actually sure if he where his buildings are. He must have some buildings somewhere, but uh, it might literally just be this power plant up here, and that is basically it. Phoenix and Rex have reformed their front line Futurama is looking to execute on the 1v2 that Phoenix was not able to pull off in the last game. 
This is a massive GDI army. Would be nice to clear out that last pocket before he commits into the attack, but I also understand the desire to kill off these last couple of units. One tripod extremely low on HP. If you could get the kill, it stops it from healing up to full. Engineer to jump inside of that tip spike. This almost feels like Drive is coaching Futurama in a 1v2 because Drive is still legitimately in this game. He's got one building. He's got a couple of units roaming around the map. Other than that, he has been eliminated, but we see him dropping beacons and pinging things to Futurama to bring his attention to areas of interest. Look at this, this is legitimate scouting. This is a stealth harvester this late in the game and he's going to be performing basically a scout of this corner expansion. This is great from Drive. He's getting eyes all over the map with these stealth harvesters. That's something you can't do as Black Hand. Futurama has started at the game will end sooner or later for better or for worse. One team is going to a 2-1 score. Will it be driving Futurama or Rex and Phoenix? It's massive juggernauts on the low ground. APCs and infantry going perhaps to their doom as the forces of Futurama look to punch through the defenses. Orca Strike? Orca Strike is going to miss, but it disrupts the front line over there. And it's going to be the collapsing in of Futurama as his MCB safely makes its way down to the low ground. Phase on these tripods, massive crushes, huge losses on the rocket squads, and Futurama's frontline DPS just collapsed. He's crushed through so many juggernauts, but the buzzers as the follow-up may truly thin out the herd. Futurama doesn't have infinite units, and he's losing his juggernauts one by one. That combination of tripod crushes with the follow-up buzzers is just massive, massive damage. The phase wears off at the last second there. That's a double vet tripod going for Heroic. Not finding it just yet, but two engineers going down. Rocket squads and juggernauts all get eliminated, and it's a fresh, fully Heroic rocket squad for Futurama as his front line collapses. Sonic emitters get deployed on the side of Phoenix and it's a scrappy fight to the death. Bare bones as these guys slam into each other for the upteenth time. The MCV maintains its position, its watchtowers as perhaps the only thing that Futurama can afford. The last couple of juggernauts going down Phoenix wishing, wishing desperately that he had bought rail guns like Futurama has, but Futurama somehow keeping the hope alive. Sniper teams getting called in. The infantry won't last much longer. Futurama is almost out of units. Two, maybe three Predator tanks remain as you drive. Well, no, actually, Drive is not a part of this fight because Futurama kills the juggernaut of Phoenix. Phoenix and Rex, they may have just barely done it. Sniper teams are here. The triple barracks won't matter as Futurama has been defeated. The GG gets called. Rex and Phoenix take an, an incredible game number three. An immense victory here as Futurama almost single-handedly wins the second half of that game, but he just wasn't able to to do it huge economy lead for futurama rex and phoenix barely able to come through i really feel like that rocket squad crush tactic was just the pretty close to the game winning move at the last moments there rex and phoenix take the lead in this series sending us into game number four and that brings us to the map the harvest for game number Four. On the left side, playing as the blue screen, this is Rex. And uh, is to the south, his teammate as the purple nod, this is Phoenix. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, with a phenomenal game number three, but unable to take, pull it out in the end, this as the Cyan GDI is Futurama. And of course, that means as the green GDI, it's drive. Double GDI from our team in the east. 
Meanwhile, uh, Scrin not. So a new faction for Phoenix. I'm curious as to why he decided to switch things up and go for Nod. Looks like double Tib Spike for each player. There might be a an additional Tib Spike? No, I guess not. There is an EMP control center in the middle, a couple of mutant hovels as well. I'm not familiar with this map. There is a big, this looks like almost Roctagon size kind of a, I guess it's not that big. Uh, Roctagon is a decent bit bigger, the big giant field in the middle. But yeah, decent sized field in the middle of the map and then a double expansion in the south for each player. Drive with the Rifleman, able to get the kill on the buzzers of Rex. We'll see what Rex chooses to do now that he's not going to have those cultists, which I feel like he he's every game he's sort of attempted the cultists. They haven't been huge value. Uh, Drive and Futurama have obviously been pretty aware of them and have prioritized killing them off, so it wasn't like big, big value in any case. But we'll see exactly what he does. He's probably looking forward to using that stasis chamber to, uh, stasis shield to lock down units rather than the slow field. Expansions to the south for both teams. No... No special builds from anyone. It's not like any... We've seen in the past, Drive and Futurama have turned out all-ins, like team-based all-ins, where it's clearly something that they planned, practiced maybe even, and came up with for the purpose of getting a quick win in a team-based event. But in this particular case, no, it's just very normal, slow, macro-oriented openers from everybody which lots of players, lots of people, lots of viewers do like those longer, big battle games with giant high-tech armies. And so it looks like here in game number four, that is what we were going to be getting. And of course, all of us at home hoping for a 2-2 to be the map score, getting us a bit closer to a game number nine. We at least know that it won't be a 5-0 shutout, so that's glad, but, you know, always a fan of more games. If there are more games, that's better for me. I'm happier. I get more Kane's Wrath. And this is... I feel like this is such an amazing setup in terms of the players. Rex and Phoenix seem like they're playing fantastically, even at the moments where it's a 1v... or a, when it's just two separate 1v1s. They still feel like they're playing really well today. Drive and Futurama, I basically can never get tired of this combination. These guys are always putting out good games. They're always great together. So I feel like it's, if we could get, you know, a best of 800,000, then uh, 800,001, I guess, then I'd be pretty happy because this is a phenomenal four-player setup. These are four guys that I love to watch, so why not get a couple of more games from them if we can? Harvester is going to make a run for it. Couple of rocket squads, couple of rocket, a uh, couple of scorpion tanks are here for Phoenix. Bits of pressure here and there. I take the blue field now. Phoenix doesn't actually have a harvester moving over, at least not just yet. Attenuated force fields are coming in here for Rex. He's going to be able to clean out those bunkers. Interesting commitment to Rex. Hey, here we go. We've been waiting for this all series long, but it's pretty much only been marked of Kane. So it's all been Tiberium weapons. It hasn't been any flame weapons so far. Uh, ooh, mine dropped directly on top of that Predator tank. That's what everyone hopes. Well, actually, mine dropped on top of an MCV or on top of big high-tech units, like on top of 24 Juggernauts. That would be amazing. That's what everyone really wants. Just kill a bunch of Juggernauts basically instantly. Ooh, this is a lot of Seeker tanks. They don't have the Shard Launcher upgrade, at least not just yet. He might be going for that. One Hammerhead goes down. Conyard is going to be safe for now. AP ammo has been purchased. 
There's going to be the shard launcher upgrade. Rex is looking for some damage, but what is going to be his target? Airfield gets sold off, so I think Drive just wanted that for the Orca strike and maybe the scan, but not much more than that. I guess the scan is actually command post, not the airfield. And here are the Harvesters. I think this is the real target here for Rex. One Harvester down extremely quickly. Second Harvester is going to run for it. And these Seeker Tanks are just sort of trading out, doing not much more than that as the Eradicator Hexpod spawns into the map. Drive is going to be putting a bit of pressure on Phoenix in the south. Meanwhile, Rex is still trying to trade out and keep these Seeker Tanks alive. The Harvesters for Futurama have completely abandoned this field and have not returned to post. A couple of Scorpion tanks in the north. Phoenix putting some pressure on Drive and Futurama in the north as he deflects the damage that Drive is hoping to do in the south. Vertigo Bombers find a great cluster. Four Predator tanks explode at once. Blink forward won't catch them on the crush, but the descent inside of that Eradicator will help secure a couple of kills. Two more, three more Predators on the exit. A great catch and kill maneuver by Rex. Really well executed there. Seeker tanks escaped out the bottom, escaped out the bottom. They catch the returning home harassing forces of Drive. Futurama is set up shop near the middle with his Mar, but Drive is the one with the, with the glitched out ox transport as he gets to the safe area outside of that airfield and uh, drops off that sniper team. Nice kill on that juggernaut. I don't even know what got, oh, it must've been a vertigo, but nice kill on that juggernaut, whatever it was. And look at this, Rex returning back home with his massive seeker tank army. Not so massive anymore. Prodigy, nope. Oh, what? Uh, that must be an R19 change. I don't remember <laughs> reading that, but that is a mind-controlled hammerhead with a mastermind inside. That's a real... I mean, I don't know what the mastermind can really do inside of that hammerhead. You really need your allies' hammerhead, but that's going to be a blink forward into a cluster of juggernauts. Massive damage on that eradicator hexapod and barely able to save it three juggernauts going down there in the chaos the eradicator hexabot nearly dying for that and at the same time phoenix drops uh sniper teams sniper teams get the kill okay drive comes in there with the covert ops james bond from the distance calling the shots uh phoenix i was trying to say gets a nuke and i don't uh let's see real quick Okay, yeah, he laser fences at Master Computer Countermeasures. That's, you know, a real nuke. It's not a nuke to try and distract someone. Oftentimes we'll see the decoy nuke get placed down in front of an army just to absorb a couple of shots by a couple of seconds for a retreating army. But that's a real nuke counting down, and that gives a clock to any kind of a stalemate that might form in this game. You got a wall of juggernauts? Cool. I got a nuke. What is your wall of juggernauts going to do against my nuke? Honestly, not a whole lot. Vertigo Bombers, nuke, some very powerful stalemate breaking tools, but we do have five minutes and 45 seconds before it could possibly pop off. Radar jamming missile fires off. Uh, Drive and Futurama, they are happy to just play this one out a bit slow and a bit safe as they mine that center field. This flame tank literally cannot decide what he wants to attack. Changing targets two or three times. Pitbulls are being sent in to deal with the flame tank. Uh, go for a couple of upgraded power plants, I guess. It's not a black hand flame tank, so it doesn't do that massive, massive damage to buildings, but still burns through buildings very quickly and will get three power plants before it's finally eliminated. Rage Gen fires off. Phoenix looking to thin out the front line. Vertigo's come in as two of those juggernauts explode. Vapor Bomb as well lands. Meanwhile, on the opposite side, it's going to be the Orbital Bombardment and the catch of nothing. I think everything basically avoids that Orbital Bombardment. Shockwave Artillery also fired off. Giant, giant wall of Juggernauts. And there's the crush as the blink forward from the Eradicator Hexapod 
finds the damage, and it's going to be the tip vein detonation on top of this army, but the Eradicator goes down, and that's massive damage on both sides of the fight. Sonic emitters onto the front line. The Mar pushing this further forward as well, and it looks like Rex and Phoenix are going to call it quits and back off. Shockwave artillery catches. It doesn't matter. Catches the Redeemer. Phase locks it down immediately, so no damage will be done. I guess technically there might be a bit of damage, but no significant damage will be done. The front line completely evaporates, but there is still a massive back line for Rex and Phoenix. Rex, Rex able to escape with his drone ship. All right, mine drop. It's in the middle of a bunch of sonic emitters, so they'll be able to clean these mines out no problem. It's a delay tactic. It does sort of slow down any advance. A couple of Tiberium Crystals all go down, also go down, but I don't think that was an intended side effect. Maybe Phoenix can tell us uh, if his mind drop in the middle of the Tiberium Field was supposed to kill Tip Crystals that are under the control of his opponents. Sniper team's coming in. Another flame tank has joined the fray. The Eradicator Hexpod witnesses all of these Seeker tanks that have just been hanging out there for like five or ten minutes, it seems like. Uh, this is a massive tripod army. They're going to be just rushing in here. They get the sniper teams as they start to land. Two of the Juggernauts get eliminated immediately. And it's going to be a full-scale response as Rex just draws the army of driving Futurama out of position near the front lines. And he just runs for the back lines. But actually, no, Futurama doesn't give chase with very much, so this could be massive damage done to the main base of Drive and Futurama. These tripods are just going to collapse on the main base, the original MCV of Futurama, and they are basically unopposed. Looks like a couple of zone troopers are getting called in, and there's actually going to be a wormhole as the exit, and what a bizarre exit indeed, but I guess... They got the damage done that they wanted, and now they're back on the front line. That may have been an entirely distractionary attempt. Welcome Baby Burt to the action as this flame tank goes into the background and finds the damage in the south that the tripods couldn't find in the north. Going to be a couple of power plants after the kill of that refinery. One more power plant, maybe? And it's going to be the zone troopers as the response. They should be able to blitz over here and deal with that flame tank, but not before the kill on a refinery. Hey, every bit can help sometimes, as there is going to be a Tib Catalyst missile sinking another refinery as well. And the refinery of Futurama did actually survive the onslaught from the flame tank. Blink forward. How many juggernauts? Just one might be caught. No, immediately. Pulled away by the mastermind, saved, and we're somehow under 90 seconds to the nuke. It feels like just stuff has been happening constantly, and the last five minutes have evaporated very quickly. Spectres with massive damage landing so many shots on the juggernauts. And it looks like a couple of Devastator warships are here to chip away at those frontline buildings as Wave Force Artillery... <laughs> whoops, wrong game! As a War Factory and a Sonic Emitter both go down, and it's going to be beacons called in. These sniper teams reveal themselves. A planetary assault carrier will call down the shots to eliminate those snipers, and the Temple of Nod will survive the barrage, the onslaught, as the mine once again nearly trap the Marv, but don't get the kill. Drive and Futurama have a massive line of juggernauts, a huge amount of late game GDI tech. They made an attempt. Overlord's Wrath. Oh, okay. This is for Tiberium. I was very confused for a moment, but yeah, that's for the Tiberium. If you didn't know, the Overlord's Wrath does spawn in a little grid of Tiberium. I believe a 3 by 3 grid worth of Tiberium. And one more tripod just jumps into the back line. All right, as the nuke gets ready, the scouting is going to be supremely important. There's the blink forward as the nuke is ready to go. Two juggernauts fall immediately, and there's going to be the countdown as this nuke will find its mark. 
juggernauts explode a huge catch for phoenix here in game number four he wants to make sure that his lead in this series is not just a one game fluke vapor bomb gets called in so many husks get eliminated and this might signal the beginning of the end the blink forward as the eradicator hexapod looks for two more kills the stasis on top of three juggernauts it's a full-scale collapse as rex and phoenix end the game take the series to a 2-1 lead they say one win is enough for Drive and Futurama. A massive screen Air Armada is here, and it's going to be all down to Drive. Futurama is no longer here on the front lines. The end is nigh. GG is going to be coming out soon, unless there is some sneaky way that Drive can make a comeback in this game. I don't think he's going to be able to beat back this army. Anti-air is nice. The MCV goes down. The army does retreat from the front lines, but it doesn't matter. There it is, the end of the match, as it looks like Drive will be defeated. Rex and Phoenix, it was dicey for a little while, but that nuke was absolutely the right call and paid huge dividends at the end. That'll do it for game number four. Game number five is where we potentially enter the danger zone. If Phoenix and Rex can get another win here, they will be just one point away from taking the series. Which takes us to Desert Rampage for game number five. In the north as the Red Traveler 59, it's Rex. Feeling pretty good after that last game win and going Crane first because there is a big blue Tiberium field that other every player starts with. As the orange nod, this is Phoenix. And on the south side, they're looking to make up some space because as the Cyan Traveler 59, it's Futurama. And of course that means you already know who he is, but you don't know what he's playing. As the green marked of Kane, give it up for Drive. Traveler 59 Mock versus Traveler 59 Nod. Who will win? I guess the Nod and the Mock, you know, they're similar, but one does have better EMPs. One has better uh, laser weapons on their Tier 1 units. So we'll see if it ends up being EMP. Ooh, it misses the Harvester. A bit unfortunate there. Does uh, shut down the refinery, so the harvester goes back out to the field, and I guess every delay is nice. MCV gets slowed down a little bit here. Rex is going to be slightly annoyed by that. But players opening up on that blue Tiberium want to get some harvesters out quickly. And uh, the crane, I thought more players would actually open crane, but it really is just Rex who has opened crane, I think no one else has everyone else is just going refinery into war factory and then going to be getting as many harvesters as quickly as they can that double income does give you a bit more leeway and rex actually uh, finding himself in a bit of a tough spot going into low power mode he gets out the buzzer hive has to power down his portal power down one of his refineries minor minor setbacks not major by any sense but he does finally get his power stabilized a little bit with that additional power plant Operation Center is the choice, but Drive is, of course, a non-flame kind of faction. So we'll have to see exactly what Phoenix is trying. No, it's directly into a third refinery. Expands down to the south. He has a couple of Seeker tanks to worry about. A bit of pressure coming in here from Futurama. Meanwhile, on the south side, it's actually going to be more descent. So this could be a stasis? He's not going fast legs, at least not just yet. Looks like another refinery over there. So if he is going fast legs, they're going to be a bit delayed. Harvester hunting is the name of the game for Futurama. I don't think Phoenix will actually lose a harvester between the repairs and the scorpion tanks. Well, I may have spoken too soon. The scorpion tanks not doing enough damage to those seekers. One more shot. No, he doesn't get the last shot as that harvester has so little HP. He did not get that final blast to slice and dice it. 
Operations Center is up and running for Fu for Phoenix. Meanwhile, Futurama, it looks like losing a handful of descents, maybe even more than a handful. And these two up here are slow descents still. They get cleaned up. That actually was just a pretty big misstep. Growth Accelerator on the blue field wouldn't be a bad idea for Rex to do the same thing, but he's got a bit of a base push to worry about. Drive, putting some pressure on Rex. Futurama is also adding in a buzzer hive. He's noticed the portal over on the left side, and he says, well, I'm going to try and deal with that with some buzzers. Beam cannons get a couple of good shots off, and Drive going right for the beam cannons, fueling this with his blue Tiberium economy, followed up with that green field. It's trouble in paradise for Phoenix and Rex. The pressure is coming in. The flame tanks are here on the right side, but Futurama spots those out nice and early. He's going to be able to get the kill, get the kill on that flame tank, and the pressure is not stopping. Drive is going to be forcing Rex to get out of dodge, and Rex still has about a third of that Tiberium field left to capture. So that's a lot of blue Tiberium that is just left on the ground. Meanwhile, it looks like Scorpion tanks are getting eaten up by these descents, even going to laser, laser fence that refinery. And they say, well, the score may be 2-1, but it is not going to be 3-1 in your favor. Or actually, it may be 3-1, uh, but it's not going to be 4-1 in your favor. Beam cannons joining together here as it looks like. Unless there's some kind of... Oh, this flame tank in the background! Phoenix finds a couple of kills, but you have to wonder, even if you kill the main base when your opponent has their MCV access to some fresh blue Tiberium, how much can one flame tank really do? Futurama is pretty much untouched. He's ready to take a third Tiberium field all from that central location, central location of where your MCV starts. And Futurama is keeping up the pressure because, I mean, as much as he once because uh, he's going to be able to very easily transition to his next field and put on as much pressure as he wants. Flame Tank goes down. Futurama is ready to go to the late game. And he's got a couple of tripods already here. Drive is happy with how this game has started. He's captured another Tiberium field, which he can expand off of, or he can try and take the blue. But he's got a couple of beam cannons trying to sneak their way into the back of Phoenix's base. Futurama, is he going to join this assault? The drone platform has taken a ton of damage. And, uh, well... Bikes are finding a bit of damage here with the help of these beam cannons. Burns down the air tower, burns down the tier three. There goes the tech, there goes the economy. As bit by bit, Phoenix has been torn apart. A war factory goes down. Even his MCV could be under threat, but another harvester takes a ton of damage. Vertigos go down, and it looks like Phoenix is going to have more problems as Futurama pulls up this time from the south, and he has got a direct assault on Phoenix's natural expansion. Goodbye to that lead as Drive and Futurama take game number five and bring the score a little bit closer the swiftest game that we have had yet. And it's, of course, the map that starts with Blue Tib. Let's jump into game number six, which takes us to Ice Arena to potentially even up the score, make it 3-3 three, three between these teams. As the red, this, playing Traveler 59, is Rex. His teammate as the pink, sticking with that GDI from game number one. This is Phoenix. He says, I've had enough of that nod action. I want to go back to my good old GDI roots. I want to play some more of that late game juggernaut style. As the green, Mark of Kane, sticking with what worked. This is Drive. And that means as the Cyan, switching over and sticking with Traveler 59. This is is Futurama. The question is, do Drive and Futurama even up the score, or do Phoenix and Rex extend their lead once more? 
3-3 is a much more comfortable position for Drive and Futurama coming back from a two-game deficit to be able to even up the score that way would be a fantastic feeling. Give them a better shot at taking it to uh, to the win. Nice kill on the buzzer there, but it's just scouting squads. With it being Mark Kane and GDI, Traveler 59, I'm not anticipating any kind of early game aggression. I think we're going to return to form and that this is going to be settled somewhere in the 10 to 20 minute mark. I don't think anyone's going to be able to get a swift victory in the mid game. Three bikes are here for drive. He's gonna do a bit of damage to this harvester. Would be very surprising if he was able to get the kill. The Harvester does juke to the safe side and actually some uh, maybe some free damage on the drone ship. Watchtower claims one kill. APC might get another. Seeker Tank is going to keep giving chase. Uh, fourth bike joins the fray, but it gets eliminated, so the number is still two. Never mind, the number is now one. Expansion's going to be coming up. Drone ship hops the rift. One of the absolutely nice things about playing a scrin faction on this map is you can just jump over this mountain ridge that separates you from your natural expansion. Drive has walked his way along the southern edge there. Phoenix is well set up as well. Two blue fields dot the middle of the map, so we'll have to keep an eye on those because this is one of those maps that is sort of designed similarly to some of the official maps of Kane's Wrath, where you really just have two fields per player. In this case, it's one big, big field for your natural or two small fields, which this is a little bit more like having a, uh, a natural and a third in terms of Tiberium, but it's all one location. Blue Tiberium might be the ticket or it might just be about who gets the better EMPs to lock down those lines of juggernauts. Pitbulls and buggies going to be trading. Seeker tanks trading in the north. Futurama worried about getting outgunned. He's going to escape away. Phoenix gets a full load of blue Tiberium. Well, Futurama is going to do a uh, full-scale retreat back to help out Drive. Maybe gets the Pitbull on the exit? Barely not. A very calm early game develops into a pretty calm mid-game. No advanced articulators for Futurama. And he does have the numbers disadvantage, so Rex wins that fight pretty easily. A couple of bikes are here, but there's a barracks, a guardian cannon, and some rockets as well as pit bulls here to ward off the forces of Drive. Going to commit into an attack. Doesn't go for the Harvester. Does get a kill on a pit bull. That's six bikes. That'll chunk down a Harvester pretty well. Second War Factory for Drive. Way in the south there. No operations center just yet. We do have the stasis chamber here for Futurama. Command post is up for Phoenix. AP ammo is researching. And is it going to be another war factory or airfield? He goes for the airfield, Phoenix does. Bit of pressure in the south. Descents from Futurama now matched in upgrades. They finally got their fast legs so they can chase after Rex. They may have to just settle for these rocket squads. Tier 3 is up and running for Rex. He starts up, I assume, the shard launcher upgrade immediately. A lot of descents here from Futurama. A couple of gunwalkers as well. Hopefully he's got that uh, Tier 3 heading his way as well, but we'll see. He's going to crash in here. A lot of descents going for the kill. Not going for the harvesters just yet. Buzzer Hive on the front line. It's low power for a moment. Watchtower gets deployed. AP ammo is finished up. So it's going to be short work for a lot of these descents. There's the slow field, and the harvesters are the real target. The gunwalkers are the only thing with guns in the north. Looks like Drive has maybe taken a bit of damage there on the south side of the map. The Prodigy is going to run for the hills, and Futurama is committing a lot 
to try and get this kill. Rex is outrunning Futurama. Those legs move faster than the gun walkers, but it's going to be bikes and a couple of buggies coming in here for drive. He gets one harvester. Well done. A second harvester goes down. Rex's economy is going to be pretty weak after this. Harvester number three goes down and four is under threat. It quickly gets eliminated and Rex is going to be looking to get some damage done on the other side of the map, but he's going to have to rely on Phoenix to do it two harvesters could they be going down as rex is going to be hoping that phoenix does maximum damage to drive to try and even the score i think rex has taken a bit more than drive so far there's going to be a phase as futurama saves one of drives harvesters and the carnage continues on the top side as the gunwalkers swing back in perhaps they finally caught and cornered that prodigy as the first Eradicator Hexapod, I think, steps out onto the field. Futurama perhaps has his monstrous mechanized alien walking around looking to stomp its way towards Rex's main base. Big bike buggy swing on the south side. One harvester gets overwhelmed. A second harvester gets targeted down. A couple of pit bulls are here as well as guardian cannons and Drive decides to cut his losses and get out of there. The last couple of gunwalkers still hanging around in the natural expansion of Rex. Not a lot of harvesters here on the front line. He's got two, one of them taking a bit of damage, getting chunked down, and the Prodigy either escaped or has been rebuilt. Tripods marching their way forward. One tripod so far on each side, but Futurama has reinforcements as well as an Eradicator Hexapod. Bikes uh, crashing into this MCV, and Drive has snuck an MCV move into this map. Futurama going to be putting on the pressure as well. Orca Strike comes in, deals a bit of damage to the Tier 3, but is that going to be enough to stop this aggression from Futurama? He's going to deploy his MCV, and there's going to be a Prodigy mind controlling with the area mind control, a phased Annihilator tripod. Drive is going to be doing basically the same thing on the south side. And goodbye, Tier 3. Futurama is going to have to exist with what is already on the map. And he's going to be pretty happy about that. Gunwalkers may be getting targeted here, but it's going to be lights out for the expansion of Rex. Drive has kind of stopped his own assault on the south side to join up here with Futurama and Phoenix. He's dropped a couple of watchtowers, but that's not much more. Hit for hit as the Prodigy captures and sells off the Tier 3 of Rex. And then the Hammerhead commits deep into enemy territory, but doesn't get anything. The EMP locks down the Eradicator Hexapod, but there's nothing here on the side of, of Phoenix and Rex to save this. Once again, Rex steps out of the way to let Phoenix handle the 1v2. Can Phoenix win in the south while Futurama wins in the north? No. It will not be, and in under 10 minutes, Drive and Futurama take another win. That score is maxed out 3-2-3 three, three after game number six. We go into game number seven with the series fully reset. It will not be an easy win for either team. Whoever gets the win here on Pipeline Fusion undoubtedly has the momentum both teams locked at a 3-3 score, equally two points away from victory or defeat. In the north, spawning as the pink, this is the Traveler 59, Rex. He's been having a fantastic performance today in the top right-hand corner, playing as the green nod. This is Phoenix who has also been having a very good showing today. Yes, Phoenix is indeed playing green, which means in the bottom left-hand corner, playing purple, playing marked of Kane, going crane first. It's drive. And the only consistent player, this is the Traveler 59, playing Cyan. Give it up for Futurama. More crane firsts in this game. You've got the more protected Blue Tiberium, of course, we do see some players play into the aggression of trying to go for, go to kill that pocket blue Tiberium of their opponent. 
but of course pipeline fusion is the 2v2 variant of pipeline problems the 1v1 map so it's not a big surprise that everyone is just playing this out almost exactly like they would be playing out a 1v1 on pipeline problems into the operation center this is pre second war factory and pre extra refineries so it looks like phoenix did not continue the base crawl towards his blue tiberium as you can see everyone else has much closer refineries to that blue tiberium shortens the drive distance to be able to get more money more quickly but the fast flame tank may be the ticket to completely disrupt your opponents and make that economic advantage not matter. Seeker tank is here on the right side. This is two seeker tanks and some descents, which will be able to spot out this flame tank very early. So this is not what Phoenix wanted. He delayed his economy because of this, and he is going to be paying the price. Two assimilators here. I assume they're going for these defensive towers or maybe one for the EMP. I guess we'll see. Phoenix did end up with both of the Tiberium spikes in the north. Meanwhile, Drive ended up with both of the Tiberium spikes in the south. So the Nod players do get the win there. Disrupt, uh, Descents do get killed there. Flame Tank does manage to escape. Bit of scouting coming in there from Futurama. All right, we had a little bit of an early game scare, but things are stabilizing from there. I assume the EMP fired off, just being a slight delay to the economy of Rex, but again, not a big deal. As we look towards the mid game, this will most likely get pretty explosive, fueled by those blue Tiberium economies from the early game. Fast Growth Accelerator coming in here for Rex. Futurama has not done the same in the south. And uh, this is definitely, you know, any map with Blue Tiberium, you got to think a Growth Accelerator is going to be much more likely to pay for itself than uh, any other map, any other green field. All right, it's a second War Factory from Drive. He says, yeah, that green Tiberium field plus the blue Tiberium, that is enough for me to go for a base push off of it. So he drops an extra War Factory, and we'll see exactly what Futurama wants to do. He finally dealt with Phoenix's Black Hand Squad, and I love this from Rex. He drops his Tier 3 on the other side of the map. He does not want the chance of that thing getting sniped by these Scorpion tanks or getting peppered down by the EMPs and just worked away at. He drops it in a much safer location. And he says, Phoenix, guard my stasis chamber and guard my tier three. And Phoenix is going to do it. Flame tanks and scorpions going to be heading down the right side of the map. Phoenix has got a little bit of a present, present for Futurama, but Futurama sees it. He knows what's going on. Tripods are making their way to the front line. Warp Chasm is here. Eradicator Hexapod halfway done for Rex. Goodbye, Flame Tank. That went nowhere. Twice in a row, the Flame Tank attempt down the right side of the map has gone nowhere. Drive has the pressure. The slow field comes in here. There's going to be the Prodigy getting called in. It blinks forward. It dodges. The Buzzer Hive getting called in. The Buzzer Swarm support power getting called in by Futurama. Where's the MCV? There's the MCV as Rex looks for his capture and kill. He needs the stealth reveal because of the disruption tower, and that's going to be a fresh portal on the front line, but Drive has been completely slowed down. He has been completely disrupted. Wonderful stealth field there. The EMP and the tripods are tearing apart these these uh, beam cannons and Drive's attempt at the front door of Rex has been completely wrecked as he gets dropped and he gets turned around. It's up to Futurama. It's going to be a bit of a 1v2 as Drive is looking to get back on his feet. Engineers getting spread out by Phoenix. Is he going to try and take the Tib Spikes on the opposite side of the map, or is he going to be going for his own EMP control center? It looks like he might be. Two more Flame Tanks down the right side. Phoenix is a nod, so he could be going for a stealth field on those Flame Tanks. Futurama spots out the carryalls. He spots out the Engineers. Rex expands out into the middle of the map. He's feeling fantastic. 
Venom is here. Futurama is looking for the kill. There's going to be the EMP. It catches three tripods, but the phase saves two of them. The third cannot be saved, but the Eradicator Hexapod is going to do what it can to secure as many kills from Futurama as it can. One Shock Trooper, two descents, and it's going to be just lots of lasers poured into those phased tripods. I hope Futurama or Drive have engineers nearby to grab these husks because they are going to need the extra firepower. Another nuke gets added on. This is in the back door. Master computer countermeasures are there. The flame tanks have found their mark. Low power mode could be on the way for Futurama. Finally, as Phoenix tries for the third time down the right side of the map, flame tanks do their damage, go for the stasis as well to stop any prodigy from being added into the mix. Maybe even the cultists will be the heroes. They are the heroes. They catch one of the flame tanks. The tier three, will it be broken? It looks like the answer is no. Did an engineer, an engineer snuck into that? He did indeed. Futurama loses his tier three, but not to the flame tank. And the disruption tower is just an added annoyance. Futurama has been completely thrown off his rhythm. A couple of Scorpion tanks are going to be getting grabbed. Not the end of the world for Phoenix, who once again has his sights set later into the game. I love this from Drive, hunting cultists before the fight even begins. Want to cut down those cultist numbers as much as you can at basically every stage of the game. Mind drop or vapor bomb, neither one lands. Tripod goes down, Vertigo Bomber finds its mark. Rage Gen delays the army for a moment longer, but Futurama says, I'm here to stay. He brought his drone ship with him and he brought his build radius to the front door of Phoenix. Was the nuke too much of an investment in the future? Maybe Futurama will be thanking Phoenix for spending money for, you know, something that he can't activate for seven minutes, five more from now. EMP must be coming close for Phoenix. Those sneaky engineers. All right, Futurama slows his attempt. Drive sends in a couple of Venoms. What? How did these beam cannons get so far into the future? It looks like they are real beam cannons as they burn down that refinery, burn down that portal, and look for more targets after that. The crane is just moments away from getting eliminated. And where did this tier three, oh, that's actually Rex's tier three, as Futurama is pressing on forward, the beam cannons disrupting Rex and targeting down everything that they can. Stealth beam cannons in the back of your opponent's base. The EMP catches that Eradicator Hexapod and this Redeemer takes more and more damage. Four minutes still on the clock before Phoenix can use his expensive nuke and Obelisk gets deployed and actually Futurama hands everything over to Drive. He loses his MCV. His assault gets slowed down as Drive is looking to burn down these buildings one by one, slowing Rex down, but the Eradicator Hexapod gets eliminated and Futurama gives everything up, hoping that Drive can finish the job. Drive is slowly burning down Rex's main base, his beam cannons annihilating buildings one after another, but it won't be enough. The GG gets called, the nuke does not land, and Rex and Phoenix move to the match point position against Drive and Futurama. It's going to have to be a two-game comeback for Drive and Futurama. They've done it once before. Can they do it again? Which takes us to Suburban Arena. Continuing the theme of 1v1 maps turned into 2v2 maps. As the red GDI in the north, this is Phoenix. His teammate as the yellow Traveler 59, you already know, it's Rex. And of course, you know who the other guys are. But what are their factions? Do you have a guess? You probably guessed right, because it's the green, marked of Kane. it's Drive. We're back to our normal colors as the yellow, as the Cyan Traveler 59. This is Futurama. 
Game number eight. So close to victory. So close to defeat. Although, Driving Futurama won one of the games in like six minutes, so they're also potentially very close to victory. It's just they gotta survive this game. No more mistakes for them. And Rex and Phoenix, who have been looking pretty good, they're the ones who first got the point advantage, and they're hoping to finish that out here today. A couple of scouting buzzers moving around the map, but I'm not anticipating any real sneakiness from anyone. No nod, no black hand, no flame weapons of any kind in this game. Mark Duvkane, Traveler59, and GDI probably all pointing towards the late game. And of course, as Drive and Phoenix, you're the guys down in points looking against that match point score that Rex and Phoenix have. And you got to be thinking to yourself, like, what do we do to turn things around? In this case, they are not going for one of their very aggressive two-player all-ends. They're hoping that the late-game performance will be what wins them this match. Win the map? Maybe you can win the whole match. As, uh, you know, this is a pretty small map, and we are going to be into the late-game and into the middle of the map with probably big mechanized armies clashing very soon. Are there going to be any shenanigans? Any sneaky prodigies around at the side? Maybe a nuke from Drive or an ion cannon from Phoenix? Phoenix has tried twice and successfully landed one super weapon. So maybe he's looking to follow that up with an additional super weapon here in game number eight. I mean, he's on match point, so that would be a pretty splashy, flashy way to send out the series and claim victory. Command post before the fourth refinery, before the second war factory. Phoenix is feeling pretty confident that he can safely go for that tech before going for more economy or more army. Futurama, on the other hand, goes into a portal, and Drive goes into a second war factory. Additional portal, Nerve, and Stasis all here from Rex. So he's going a little bit tech as well, but keeping his options open with those descents. Futurama feeling like he's probably going to drop the Stasis next, although that's building pretty slow, so I guess it's not the Stasis. Orchestra Strike coming in. Well, Futurama dodges it with one Harvester, but not the other two. Couple of Preds, couple of APCs are here. Uh, Mind Drop does kind of disrupt the forces of Futurama. Nice explosion there. Cleans out a Seeker Tank or two. Disruptors take a bit of a hit. Lightning Spike gets added on. It's defensive for Futurama. And it looks like Rex might be joining the fight as well. A decent number of Seeker Tanks, a decent number of Descents in the mix. Slow field comes in for Futurama. His portal getting slowed up. Not enough cash in the bank for Futurama. He's got two harvesters almost full of Tiberium, but it's a dangerous spot to try and unload them here on the front line. Phoenix continuing into the back line. Might find a tier three unprotected at the north side of Futurama's base. The tripod is here to absorb those shots. And as long as he doesn't go down, that's all right for Futurama. A bit of action, and now things might just calm down. I don't think three Gunwalkers are going to do much against Drive this late in the game. Three Gunwalkers at minute zero, maybe. But uh, not at this point. No Warp Chasm just yet. We're still a few moments away from that for Rex. We see the Marv on the way for Phoenix. But it looks like that is the only epic unit on the way currently. We would be very surprised if in three minutes we don't have all of them out on the field. But, ooh, Area Mind Control takes over two of those tripods. Forcing an awkward refinery placement. A nice snipe there by Rex. He gets the tier three of Futurama. 
And actually, a cultist or two gets dropped in here. He's going to grab a harvester. Two-thirds full of Tiberium. The prodigy does get sniped, but the cultists are going to try and make a getaway with this harvester. It's not quite the heist of the century, but it might be the heist of the year. If only he had gotten away. Orcas coming in from Phoenix. A couple of Predator tanks as well. Harvester hunting is the name of the game in the north and in the south. Three Predators die on exit. But it looks like all of the Orcas made it home safely. Except for that guy who just doesn't know how to land. If you guy asks that guy to parallel park, he's going to end up inside of a Denny's. Two engineers, two zone troopers inside of that Marv, and he keeps the, re the Reclamator hub around for a little while longer. That one Predator tank did not get the memo. Everybody else, less, everybody else left town, and he didn't. Lightning spike. Is that a... That's a weird lightning spike. Unless he's looking to preserve vision for something, that's a very weird lightning spike. Uh, Drive probably would like to get some vision. He probably needs to catalyst one of these tip fields, one of these refineries. All right, the lightning spike eventually goes down. It was indeed for vision. Uh, I don't know what that was. <laughs> that prodigy headed forward and then a scan came down. Nice sensor pod right on the front line. I love that move from Phoenix. Real quick, I want to check how much vision that actually gives Phoenix. That's vision of pretty much the whole field. I mean, the scan is still giving vision of this area up in the north. But these these Orca's sensor pods are pretty neat. Tip core missiles have been upgraded. One beam cannon goes down. This Marv is going to be uh, not much to stop it on the front line. Eradicator Hexapod shows up. Refinery is under threat. Phoenix and Rex are bringing the fight directly to Drive and Futurama. Well, actually, there are enough beam cannons here from Drive. He might be able to sap down any epic units quite quickly. If he can land an EMP or two to stop them from reverse moving away. Eradicator Hexpod nearly done for Futurama. The Prodigy is standing by. Ooh, low cash, waiting for the harvesters to transfer over. Losing that refinery was a bit of a disruption to the economy of Futurama. Goes for the uh, goes for the shock trooper. Eradicator hexapod on each side. Disrupt or devastator warships are going to try and uh, work down those buildings. Futurama's Prodigy blinks forward, but it gets sniped by the buzzer call in from Rex. Buzzers get quickly dealt with. Marv is going to be able to clean up one harvester, maybe a second harvester. EMP catches it in range of the beam cannons, but there's the blink forward. Rex is playing a 2v2. He's not going to let that heart, that Marv die for no reason. The phase on top of the Eradicator as it blinks for the crush, and it'll phase to escape. Just walk on out of there, guy. Mind drop magnetically in front of that Marv. Forces it to reverse move. Eradicator Hexapod from Futurama is still keeping its distance. Juggernaut's pounding away at the front line. Everything on the ground is under threat from Drive and Futurama. Still going for the crush. EMP to slow it down, hoping that the phase wears off in any moment and that that Eradicator Hexapod will be vulnerable. Another EMP lands. You don't have infinite EMPs, but maybe you can chain one or two more. Rage Gen fires off to stop it from being controlled. Scorpion tanks say, let's dance, and the Eradicator Hexapod blinks away. Those Scorpion tanks do not want to tango with the legs of the Eradicator. Cultists getting donated away. A Gunwalker as well. Not expensive donations, but when your opponent is this close to your front door and you haven't harvested half of your natural expansion, you don't want to be donating anything away. They've got more economy. They've got more weapons. EMP lands. That's a money EMP. Two epic units getting caught. But is it going to be enough? There's more corruptors than there are beam cannons. 
and it's an anticlimactic ending to that story as shockwave artillery catches nothing it gets a couple of harvesters though one harvester down and that eradicator just had a barrage of shots coming for it the beam cannons are going to escape as the emp locks down that eradicator the phase in the north and the slow field keep the juggernauts just churn just treading water not doing much at all rex is about to lose his eradicator hexapod even with the heel coming in the orbital bombardment on top of those beam cannons in the slow field will mean that nothing can escape the eradicator hexapod gets burned down and the beam cannons take a lot of damage it's going to be a slow death for this phased eradicator. I hope Futurama can get it out of there. Otherwise, Phoenix is about to blast it to pieces. He's got the surround. His own EMP lands as Phoenix with a tripod locks down that eradicator and finds the kill. Futurama has no economy on the front line. Drive has hardly any working harvesters and try as he might to bleed the forces of Rex and Phoenix dry. They've got the bankroll. Redeemer is here. It's one epic unit versus another nod versus GDI. Rage Gen fires off. The Juggernauts are already giving target to those of tripods, and it's one tripod falling after another as Futurama leaves the game. The 1v2 is in the hand of Drive. In game number eight, he is going to have to defeat a ton of he's given up a ton of juggernauts way too many juggernauts with the marv there as well and that's going to be gg and lights out as rex and phoenix take it five games to three we do not get our special ace match we do not get that final game a fantastic 2v2 from these four players. It felt like basically everyone was firing on all cylinders. The strategies were a bit repetitive, but we got a nice mix of factions. And the economy tells the tale here in game number eight. Thank you all very much for watching. A big thanks to Shanks for sponsoring this $50 going to Rex and Phoenix. So big thanks to him for making this show match happen. And a uh, congratulations to Rex and Phoenix. Looking forward to seeing more of them in the future. The Futurama, that is. And this is Cyber signing out. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.